everyone so today i thought i would come on and do a slightly different training video so i normally post videos which are they're just my video training diary it's just a way of me kind of keeping track of what we've done and keeps me focused to make sure that we keep doing more to progress our training on going forward so we are currently in kind of lockdown with coronavirus and so i've got a bit more time on my hands and so i recently posted a video on ivy doing heel work um, but I was flicking through some of my old videos and I found some of her doing some heel work stuff when she was about five and a half, six months old. And I thought it might be interesting to show you how I started out the very, very beginning of our heel work training. Um, and then you can obviously see how we've progressed it through. So we've got two videos. Um, one is me teaching her the early stages of that heel cue. So saying heel and getting her to go into position by my side. And I'm pretty sure the video is the first session that I did with her. So you'll see it from scratch, how I built that up at the very, very beginning. And then there's also a video on me teaching her kind of a very loose heel work framework. So when she was younger, I didn't want to put a lot of pressure on her in terms of having a, a strict position, um, but I wanted to set some good foundation. So she's in the habit of following me around essentially. So they're the two videos that I will walk you through. Um, they're not the best in terms of footage, but hopefully it gives you a little bit of insight um, into how we started out. And then you can watch the most recent video that I posted, which shows where we are now with our heel work. So, this was my first session teaching Ivy the heel cue, so being able to get her to get into position by my left side. So we started this out inside because it means there were no distractions around. And you'll see that I'm positioning her up against the washing machine just so that there's a physical barrier to help her get success with the position. Throughout this session I was just using her breakfast kibble as her reward so it's really nothing exciting and there's no risk of me overfeeding her because she's just having her daily food allowance throughout the session and you'll see there that I've got food in my hand I lure her into position when she's in position I click and then I give her the food now to start with I'm not using any verbal cues because I want to make sure that she's reliably following that lure before I start introducing that and when she's in position, I'm then giving her a string of treats in order to get her to try and stay in position and start to build value in her being by my side. In those initial repetitions, you'll see that she did pop out of position, which is fine. It just means I need to re increase my reinforcement rate. So all I do is reset, lure her back into position, click, and then continue feeding. Once I'm done, I give her my release cue, which is break, and then she's allowed to move out of position. So we're trying to give a clear end to each repetition. Now this time I'm progressing to taking the food out of my hand. So I'm faking it, essentially, and my hand position is the same, but there is no food in there. And I'm getting her to follow that body language, and then when she's in position, I click, and then I go and get the reinforcement from my pop on the top of my Corona box, and go and deliver it to her. So the lure is a great method of starting to develop certain behaviours because it allows you to get your dog to do things very quickly. But it's really important that we don't use it for too long because otherwise we can find that the dog becomes a bit reliant on the food being present in front of them in order for them to display the behaviour, which is not what we want. So we fade that out nice and quickly so the dog then performs the behaviour and the reinforcement comes after. We're now progressing on because she is reliably following that and I'm starting to adjust my body language cues. So you'll see that I'm using a flat palm and an arm movement to get her into position because I'm starting to work up to what I'd want her final cue to be. So for heel work, I do have a physical cue and I also have a verbal cue. So I'm introducing the verbal cue by saying heel. I then present my arm movement, which she's reliably following. I then click when she's in position and reward. And that was it. So a nice short session, just using her breakfast to start teaching her the heel position and to start to build value in her being at my side. So this next video it was taken about a week later and this is where I'm working separately on just trying to build foundation habits of getting her to follow me about essentially. 
So to start off, I've got a handful of food and what I'm doing is I place a piece of food on the floor, which essentially distracts Ivy briefly. That allows me to take a couple of steps forward and then once she's finished eating the food, she looks up, sees that I've moved on and starts coming back to me. As she's coming back to me, I click and then I place another piece of food down on the floor by my foot. I then step away. As she finishes eating, looks up, comes back towards me, I click and then a piece of food goes back on the floor again. Now you do have to reward pretty rapidly to start with to make this method successful, but I found it really, really useful for the sort of dogs that just ping straight to the end of the lead as soon as you take just one step forward. It's actually a method that I picked up from Jane Arden on her Wagga Woofins Canine College. I was part of her online community and she's got loads and loads of videos and resources, including this method, which she talks through in a lot more detail than I do. So I'll include a link to her website in the comments below, but hopefully this gives you a bit of an insight. So then to progress it on, all we do is start adding additional paces where she is staying with me before I click and reward. So you'll see here, I put the food down, I then take a few paces, she catches up to me and then sticks with me for about a pace before I click and then put the food down. So we take a few paces, she sticks with me, I click and food goes down. And then all we do with this is gradually build up how many steps I can take with her remaining at my side. So you'll see in this, as it was the early stages, I really wasn't that fussed about her positioning as long as she was kind of walking with me, following me somewhere near my side, then I was happy. And over time, we've just started to finesse that position a bit more to get the heel work a little bit tighter. But at five and a half months old, this was perfectly fine for me. She's still getting lots of brain breaks as well. So we do a handful of food and then she gets a break and a bit of a rest. And we would just continue to build up the number of paces we could do with her following at my side. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into the exercises that I was doing with Ivy when she was a pup to help build and develop her heel work. And I think it's worth noting that in both of these sessions, I would have been using her daily food allowance of kibble as part of the training. When we're outside, I might have mixed in a bit of chicken or something to make it a little bit more interesting because kibble doesn't always cut it. But when Ivy first came to me as a pup, she didn't have any food drive at all really. I struggled to get her to eat her meals, but by using her food in little short, sharp training sessions throughout the day, I created a dog that is now very food driven, which makes training so much easier. So I would definitely recommend using your dog's food to help with your training. It means you've got no risk of them becoming overweight because they're only having their daily food allowance anyway. And it's just been really valuable for our relationship. So it's definitely something I would encourage for all dog owners and I'll be doing it with my future pups as well. But that was it. So I hope that was interesting for those that made it through to the end. And if you have any questions, please pop them in the comments below. Wah, 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 wah. That was all rubbish.